Alrighty, it's uh, Mayor Mike Inman from Macomb City Hall. It's Saturday, the 14th day of November. We're coming to you with some uh, uh, of our latest information uh, from the McDonough County Health Department and other partners in the community regarding the status of the COVID-19 uh, pandemic here in our area. Now, we didn't uh, have any updates uh, for the last week, so this information we're going to be giving you is uh, some comparison data over the last seven days to underscore uh, kind of where we're at. This most recent data I'm sharing with you is not from today or Friday. This is actually from Thursday from the Health Department. So uh, the most recent information we have from the McDonough County Health Department that since the onset of the pandemic, there are, we've had uh, 1,134 cases since we last reported to you, which was a week ago, that's up 239 cases in seven days. And the number of active cases in the last seven days has went from 97 to 205. So that's 108 uh, more active cases that uh, McDonough County Health Department personnel are actively tracking and uh, trying to help mitigate the spread further. And uh, unfortunately, we're reporting an additional three deaths, um, uh, bringing that total to 28 deaths since the onset of the pandemic. And again, uh, for those three families that have been impacted by uh, this disease, we send our condolences. Some additional information, uh, the information that the health department breaks down also talks about regions of the county uh, where the um, most active cases are at. And unfortunately, by far, Macomb is the most active and that's the Macomb community, not including the university. The university has actually very well stabilized their population with uh, COVID. It's, we now exceed the number of cases that the university's had by nearly 200. <clears throat> the most active um, age group is 20 to 29 year olds. And again, the, the vast majority of, of these cases that we've had and continue to have be, are in the age population at or below 40 years of age. So um, it goes without saying any further, but I'm going to. Uh, the, the pandemic is running nearly uncontrolled in our county, and um, it's running uncontrolled in most areas of the state. Uh, some of our neighboring counties are um, experiencing higher percentages of uh, positivity than we are. I don't know that that's a, a good comparison because they're, they're all very much um, out of control. would tell you that the, the region of the state that we're uh, combined with for the Department of Public Health's um, matrix for tracking COVID and for uh, instilling mitigation is region two. And that's a, basically from uh, the middle part swath of the state. We're included with uh, not Hancock County, but we're included with Henderson, Warren, Fulton, Peoria, up to, uh, far, as far north as Mercer, um, Knox, and then across Scar Stark, Grundy, Kendall, and over to the Indiana state line. And I would tell you that the average um, positivity rating for that in our entire region is 15.6. We're at 16.4 in climbing. Uh, other counties, for example, McLean County has a lesser positivity rate than we do. Peoria County has a lesser positivity rate than we do. There are some um, counties in our region that have nearly 20% positivity. And I would say, although Hancock County is not in our uh, region, they are near nearly 30% positivity. So. Uh, it's all around us, um, and again, not saying this to somehow instill panic. I'm just trying to underscore the, that the, the pandemic is really, really relentless here, and it's very important that we start uh, doubling down on our efforts to help control this where we can. So the hospital continues to deal with uh, a relatively, uh, ma well, it's not relatively, a manageable number of COVID cases, but at the same time, those folks are isolated in the hospital. They're being very well taken care of. There's no reason for anyone to avoid the hospital or the, their primary care physician for fear of getting COVID. Um, uh, all the clinical staff, uh, uh, regardless of who you see as your primary care physician, physician are taking extraordinary measures to ensure your safety. So please, please, please don't put off any routine or chronic health conditions. Um, if you suffer from diabetes or other uh, chronic uh, health concerns, don't put off seeing your doctor for your routine checkups. And if you've got other maladies that uh, you need to be seen for, please don't even give it a second thought. Make uh, outreach to your primary care physician, set that up, get those uh, um, 
meds that you need, get the kind of uh, interaction with your doctor that you've always had, make sure that continues. And if you have an urgent need, do not hesitate to go to the emergency department at uh, um, MDH. They're prepared, they're uh, very capable of taking care of things in a very uh, sterile, proper environment. There's no reason for you to be concerned about uh, follow-up on non-COVID uh, medical concerns. And particularly if you uh, need the routine uh, testing, whether it's your um, of a certain age where you have to have certain screenings. Don't put those off. It's, it's just really important that we continue to do that. If you are, are recovered, and again, uh, in our data here, we're showing over 900 people have recovered from uh, COVID-19 in McDonough County. So if you're a recovered patient, please reach out to the Mississippi Valley Regional Blood Center, and that information is here on the bottom of your screen now. And you can um, be uh, assessed for being a candidate for convalescent plasma donation. That is a very um, positive uh, way of dealing with, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, COVID patients that are hospitalized. MDH has told us that they have uh, treated a number of patients with convalescent plasma. So uh, whether it's used here or more widely across the state, if you are recovered, please reach out to the Mississippi Valley Regional Blood Center to see if you could be a COVID uh, convalescent plasma donor. As it relates to mitigation efforts here uh, across the state and here locally, uh, Governor Pritzker, as you will recall, back on November 4th, issued uh, tier one mitigation, resurgent mitigation efforts in Macomb and across all of the central part of the state. We were one of the last regions to be impacted by those uh, resurgent mitigation efforts. We're at tier one. That means that there's no indoor dining uh, in bars and restaurants and some other limitations on the number of people we gather. Uh, there are other parts of the state are, that are at Tier 2, which there's more restrictive um, uh, mitigation efforts in those parts of the state that have much higher rates of positivity than uh, and we do, and they have less hospital beds available and less ICU beds available. Uh, my, my concern is, is that if we uh, don't do a better job here, we may be subject to those too, and I know that's the last thing any of us want to happen here is that, uh, impacting not only our general mental and, and physical well-being, but the impacts on the economy. So we've had a number, a number of complaints lodged at City Hall uh, of non-compliance. Those have been forwarded to the McDonough County Health Department for follow-up. I just would encourage folks to do everything they can to abide by those mitigation efforts. It really is the, in the best interest of the entire community. And again, we're trying to avoid any further restrictions. That's the plan here. Um, you can continue to um, make yourself available, or excuse me, you can still uh, access COVID-19 screening at the McDonough District Hospital Screening Center located on the southeast corner of the MDH campus. The hours uh, and uh, times are uh, here. Uh, I would tell you that currently you do not need to have any symptoms or pre register or anything like that. Please avail yourself of getting tested, but I will tell you that there's likely going to be some changes there, not major. Still the testing will take place, but you may have to, um, in the future, um, set up a time to be screened. As, it may be as easy as just waiting in line and calling and being pre-registered and you're good. Currently doesn't need to happen, but there's likely going to be some changes in that, not to be a little, uh, more restrictive, just to make sure that, that the uh, process is a little more efficient. You could also s receive COVID-19 testing uh, through a couple of uh, private uh, businesses, namely CVS Pharmacy. You, that requires some uh, scheduling, but you can contact uh, CVS via phone or on their web and, and uh, check out that. I would tell you that many of you um, have called with concerns about a delay in getting um, your COVID-19 testing back and reaching out to the hospital. They explained that some Department of Public Health labs had went, went offline um, last week for an entire 24-hour cycle, and then there was also a state holiday last week, so that caused some delay in getting um, those results back. They, they feel confident that that's been resolved at the state level. They were doing their part. The hospital is absolutely doing their part in getting those test kits to those labs. It's the labs themselves that were having some difficulty getting them processed. So again, um, we just want to remind you that this, uh, this pandemic continues to its relentless uh, effects on our community and, and broadly across the nation. And as you're likely hearing in uh, news reports uh, across the world, uh, uh, there's been a resurgence in cases and deaths in Europe and uh, 
if that's a, a forebearer of, and how that was likely to impact here, that's one thing we're trying to stress that it's so terribly important that you continue to wear your mask, you to continue to social distance, and you continue to wash your hands. Those are our three best tools we have right now to, to mitigate this spread. And I know as we get ready to approach the holiday season, there's some anxiety and some desire to gather with our family and friends as usual. I would ask you to contact or reach out and uh, see guidance on the Illinois Department of Health, Public Health's website about holiday gatherings. And that uh, website link is located here on your screen now. Uh, it gives some very good guidance. It, says it doesn't necessarily mean you can't do it, but they're going to give you some guidance on how you can limit it and still um, do it uh, from a safe perspective. It's not too early to start making those plans. Many of you probably already have plans underway. Uh, we'll be um, here in Thanksgiving in a matter of a couple of weeks, and then and before you know it, it'll be Christmas and New Year's. And the good thing about this, the positive thing about this, is that much, many news uh, uh, agencies as well as the Center for Dis Disease Control have r reported here in the last seven to ten days some very strong candidates for vaccine that are uh, uh, on track to get emergency approval with a very high efficacy value. So that's good news that uh, we're, we're on the way in the right direction for a vaccine that will eventually get us to a position where uh, this will be uh, nothing but a memory in the rearview mirror. But until then, we have to do our best to uh, continue to limit the spread of this and keep our most vulnerable uh, members of our community uh, as safe as we possibly can. So uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to our office. Um, reach out to the McDonough County Health Department. Their contact information is located on your screen now. Or contact our partners at McDonough District Hospital. And uh, our goal is to keep everybody as safe as we possibly can. And um, as, again, as we get ready uh, to celebrate some holidays here. Uh, until we meet again, thank you.